Hello everyone, I'm Dan Anderson at Intel. Today I will give a presentation on Hyperledger Sawtooth Blockchain Security. This is the first of two parts of the presentation. So today I'm going to talk about uh, Sawtooth, give an over overview of Sawtooth and blockchains in general and security. Then I'm going to talk about uh, Sawtooth consensus algorithms. Uh, part two, I'll talk about Sawtooth platform security and client security. <clears throat> so what is a blockchain? A blockchain is a distrib distributed ledger, ledger being uh, several entries or transactions in a, a book or for electronic form, a a database or some sort of log. The transactions in a distributed ledger are immutable. They cannot change. They cannot be erased, modified, or reordered. Each block in a blockchain contains one or more transactions or records. They are cryptographically chained in a specific order so you cannot modify the order. <clears throat> each chain, each blockchain is entirely duplicated on all the peer nodes in a blockchain network. And each peer node in independently verifies the contents, the transactions in a blockchain. So what are the pros and cons? The pros are it a blockchain technology allows sharing among what I call fremenies, that is mutually distrusting organizations that need to work together. They trust each other a little bit, but not totally. So they use a shared database that is a ledger <clears throat> that is immutable. The ledger is highly available. It's, it um, is fault tolerant. It could be crash fault tolerant, that is withstand errors and uh, faults, or Byzantine fault tolerant, that is withstand a, a bad actor or a malicious actor who intentionally does damage. There's also the concept of liveness, that is that the nodes in a, a uh, blockchain network will eventually agree on, on the data on the transactions. So the, some of the cons, the cons are the throughput is slower than a database, even distributed databases. You are going to get transactions in the hundreds of transactions per second, maybe thousands, but not better than that as opposed to a database, which usually measures transactions in the millions. The data in a, a blockchain is not private. It is subject to inspection by everyone on the network. You have full trans transparency. Blockchains <clears throat> are also not intended for internal only business processes. In that case, you, in, in many cases, for internal use, a database is the best solution since the corporation organization controls the whole network. It's not really, necessary to distribute among of several organizations. It's just one organization. So what are some bad trade-offs for a blockchain? One is to centralize architecture, that is have a single point of failure. That has advantage of giving very good performance, but it's really not a blockchain because the data is really just kept in a centralized location. Another bad trade-off is your is to remove data from the blockchain for privacy. So you may, for example, instead of putting the data in a, in a transaction, you would just put a checksum or a signature in the transaction and the data is stored somewhere else. Uh, but the problem is, is it's really just turns the blockchain into a, just a, a receipt or an event log. And it does not, it, the data is also not replicated among all the nodes. It's just kept maybe in offsite somewhere and hopefully it's backed up, but you really don't know. <clears throat> and what happens if there's conflicts, if there is multiple copies. 
So we have, you could consider blockchains, um, um, to, you could split them between public and private blockchains. So public, Bitcoin is the original blockchain network. It uh, resides on the internet. It is permissionless. Anyone could join the Bitcoin network. There's no gatekeeper intermediary controlling access. Miners add new blocks to uh, a public blockchain through a consensus mechanism. Uh, Bitcoin is proof of work, which involves solving a cryptographic puzzle. <clears throat> now consider private blockchains. Hyperledger Sawtooth is one of them. It's designed for use in enterprises or consortiums. It's private, so it resides on a private network behind a firewall. It's permissioned or permissionless. That's configurable. Uh, usually it's permissioned. Um, you need permission to gain access to nodes or whatever, but it doesn't have to be. There's no mining. Mining or proof of work is a pointless waste of energy and it's very unfortunate. But with private or enterprise blockchains, that's usually not the case. <clears throat> and there's several other uh, private and public blockchains out there. Um, Corda, Ethereum, Fabric, um, the list goes on. Well, here's some security practices that we have uh, for Sawtooth. Um, <clears throat> Reporting mechanisms and processes are publicly documented. There's a website you could submit bugs, and there's also a reporting mechanism, a special one for security bugs. Uh, there's a security audit or, and reviews by both the Hyperledger Consortium, part of the Linux Foundation, and by Intel. The code is message-based and component-based, and that reduces exposure and reduces vulnerabilities. So if there's a problem with one component, it doesn't necessarily mean that all other components are, are vulnerable or are exposed to that problem. And also, the major components of Sawtooth are being rewritten from Python to the strongly typed programming language Rust. That's also being done for performance reasons, but the strong typing um, reduces the amount of um, security vulnerabilities. Observability. We have verbose timestamp logs and that allows for analysis after an incident to determine what happened. We have event events that you, you could subscribe to, a block commit, state delta events, those are predefined, and the application could define its own set of events if they, they need it. Continuous integration, we have change control in our source code and continuous integration tests. Every time there's a, a push to the main source tree, the, the continuation, continuous integration run runs um, static analysis and it compiles the code and, and looks for, for problems. Um, before there's any further commits. And the commit cannot occur till the, the test and static analysis and build um, are, all, are all clean. Now we'll talk about consensus algorithms. But first, before consensus algorithms, we'll talk about SGX and trusted execution environment. A trusted execution environment, or TEE, is a general concept. It runs code in a protected region of the processor of code and data. Secure software extensions, or SGX, is Intel's version or implementation of a TEE, and it runs on the recent Intel CPUs. So what is it? So uh, let's talk about some terms. A sandbox or a jail confines code. It prevents 
the out, outside access to what's inside the sandbox. So it keeps keeps some um, things out of the system of or this restricted part of the system. A SGX enclave, in contrast, is a reverse. It's you could think of it as a reverse sandbox box or fort. It prevents the rest of the system from accessing inside the sandbox, the protected code or data. So instead of it preventing access from the sandbox out to the outside, it prevents access to inside the enclave. The SGX does not trust the operating system or other software. The code runs unprivileged. The code and data are encrypted. You could also have multiple SGX enclaves on the CPU if you want it. And the best practice for SGX is to run SGX enclaves for them to run a single well-defined function. So big enclaves are bad because if there's a vulnerability in there, it could expose all everything in the enclave. So you want small, tightly controlled functions for each enclave. So let's talk about another concept, consensus algorithms. A leader, what's a leader? A leader is somebody in a blockchain, some node in a blockchain who could add a block to the blockchain. A consensus algorithm is agreement among the, the peer nodes in a blockchain network on who is the leader. And the leader is the one who adds a new block or decides what is a new block in the blockchain. <clears throat> So let's consider two different consensus types. There's classical consensus, uh, which is an election or voting algorithm where you vote on who the leader is. Then there's the Nakamoto style consensus, which is a, a lottery. Um, the original consensus algorithm for, for blockchain is Bitcoin's um, consensus algorithm, <clears throat> proof of work. And that's a Nakamoto consensus algorithm. So next, let's consider uh, levels of fault tolerance. There's Byzantine fault tolerance versus classical or crash fault tolerance. So crash fault tolerance is something that, that could withstand crashes or errors in the system, uh, but it can't fail hostile actors or bad actors. Um, then there's Byzantine fault tolerance. The term came from um, a paper in Lampert in 1982 about the Byzantine generals problem where you have several generals trying to attack a city and they need to decide whether to attack or retreat. But you have an additional problem in there that some of these generals are malicious. There's, they're corrupt or they're spies or, or something. And so some of these messages are bad. So Byzantine fault tolerance is, is, the, is something that could withstand these bad actors um, or malicious actors. Sawtooth uh, has a dynamic consensus. That means we could change the consensus algorithm after the blockchain has been created. You don't have to reboot the system. You don't even have to. You don't, you don't have to change the, or reinitialize the blockchain or restart it. You, you could set it a, a new algorithm, and it takes effect after the current block is published. There's many consensus algorithms, and it's a very active area of research, and we don't have really the time to go into all of them. But I just want you to be aware of that. So let's talk about some. Consensus algorithms. All these are in Sawtooth except for the first one. <clears throat> we'll classify them by what we talked about in the previous slide by fault tolerance and the consensus type. So proof of work, the original con consensus algorithm or Bitcoin's consensus algorithm also used by Ethereum, um, tried to solve a cryptographic puzzle. Uh, that is the number of leading zeros and a SHA-256 hash. It's, it's a very wasteful mechanism. It, a year's worth of mining is estimated to consume about the same amount 
as a country of of Greece, um, a couple of gigabytes, a gigawatt, gig, gigawatts per year. It's BFT, Byzantine fault tolerance, a very good fault tolerance, and it's a lottery mechanism. Another BFT lottery mechanism is Sawtooth proof of elapsed time or POET. So this decides, uses a random timer to decide uh, who the leader is. And the, the timer is generated inside a secure SGX enclave. The enclave generates a random number as the time to wait and it signs it. And that is, then the node waits that amount of time. And the first node that expires, has a timer that expires, wins. And so that's a lot less wasteful than the classical proof of work algorithm by Bitcoin. <clears throat> the, then there's POET CFT. That's very similar to the POET with SGX, but it doesn't, it runs without SGX. It uses, uses a simulator instead. So it's the, this, the advantage is you don't need SGX hardware, but it's not as fault tolerant as POET with SGX. So POET CFT uh, is CFT fault tolerant, but not Byzantine fault tolerant. So it can't withstand bad actors. On the other hand, lots of other consensus algorithms can't withstand bad actors either. They're CFT. For example, RAFT at the, at the bottom is also, also CFT. Although RAFT uses an election method instead of a lottery method to decide the leader. And RAFT is also in Sawtooth. Another algorithm is PBFT, Practical Byzantine Fault Tolerance. And it's re was originally used in um, database replication. It's a, a, it's, it's a good algorithm, but the problem is it has a lot of messages. Um, it creates um, N squared messages for N nodes. And that's fine for a few nodes, you know, up to a dozen nodes or so, but you know, if you have a hundred nodes, for example, that's way too many messages and it's real, is really too um, slow. So it, PBFT is Byzantine fault tolerance. That's a, the advantage. It uses an election to decide the leader, but it, it's not very scalable. But you should consider using it um, when there's just a few nodes, as with Raft, when there's just a few nodes. Now PBFT is not is being developed right now for Sawtooth. It's there's a GitHub repository for it, but it's really not in released form yet. It's kind of in in beta right now and in, in development or beta. <clears throat> so let's talk about the poet consensus on um, the Sawtooth, one of Sawtooth's consensus algorithms. So as I said, consensus algorithm decides what candidate block could be added to a, a blockchain. That is, what node could add, add a block to the blockchain. And it's a Nak Nakamoto style consensus algorithm. That is, it uses a lottery-based mechanism. And in Pult's case, it's a random wait time. Uh, Bitcoin, and as I said before, uses proof of work, which is also Nakamoto consensus but a lot more waste, wasteful. So the nodes, the way it works is nodes generate a random wait time in a secure enclave, an SGX enclave. It's the amount is signed and ver could be verified and it waits that many seconds. And when it expires, it tells all the other nodes and says my timer expires and sends a certificate certifying that it has wait, waited that uh, saying what the wait time is that's in the certificate and that it has expired. The node that finishes first wins and adds the proposed block to the blockchain. Um, no special hardware is required for the POET CFT, but if you want to use the more fault tolerant BFT POET with SGX, um, that requires uh, Intel hardware with SGX. Other processors could also implement POET using their own TEE or trusted execution environment. Um, 
once they have some implementations available on their processor and, and somebody writes a code for it. It's very modular, so the, you only need to write the enclave part of the code to implement Poet on other processors. Poet also has defense in depth, and security is always good to just not rely on one thing for security, you have layers of security like an onion. So here's some of the, the tests to help prevent damage by a rogue node. A z-test, that test or verifies that a validator does not win too frequently. If somebody is winning all the time or uh, an unusual number of times, that's very suspicious. C-test, that says that a new node must wait C blocks after its emission before its blocks will be accepted. So that is a new node get, just can't jump in and just add a block right away. It just needs to be there for a while. And that's to try to prevent gaming of the system um, with some new nodes. K-test, K-test means that um, it's a node's certification expires and just has to recertify itself every once in a while, every K blocks um, before it could continue publishing blocks. Poet consensus with SGX. As I said, it's available without SGX. And in that case, it's just crash fault tolerant. But if you run it on an SGX processor, it is um, Byzantine fault tolerant. And you have a choice between with or without out SGX and your level of fault tolerance, but all your nodes have to run with SGX or otherwise it will go back to crash fault tolerance. You just can't have a few or some nodes running SGX and other nodes not running SGX. So if you want SGX, all the processors on the network have to have SGX capable processor. The SGX timer is the the heart of the SGX algorithm. It's, it runs within a SGX enclave. So it, it randomly generates a tamper-proof wait time. The wait time is signed with a certificate and that um, could be validated um, from its CA. Each node waits the amount of time um, that was generated by the enclave. And after waiting, it sends a SGX attestation to other network nodes that this waiting has been performed and that this is the amount of the, the time that waited. The peer nodes verify that it that the wait time was generated by the winning node to kind of avoid cheating. So that ends part one of the Sawtooth security presentation and um, next time I will start with part two, which will be Sawtooth platform security and Sawtooth client security. Thank you.